Hello everybody. Today we are going to give some quick tips on intros, conclusions, and formal writing. So, if you remember our hipster Ariel, last time we talked about how introductions should be broad and then lead into your body paragraphs, which should then lead outward into your conclusion. So, we start out really broad in our topics and then focus in in our body and then go back out broadly for our conclusion. So I'm going to get into specifics about introductions and conclusions. So for an introduction, here's an example introduction and I'm going to show you um, what I did in each part of it. So this is for the same topic. We have texting and driving is an increasing habit among people of all ages. It is estimated that about 6,000 people are killed by distracted drivers a year. As the article Cultural Change is Needed to Stop Teens from Texting While Driving explains, several different strategies have been used to try to curb texting while driving. However, the problem still persists. Texting and driving can be prevented by increasing and enforcing laws, spreading awareness, and changing the culture. So let's break this introduction down. First, I talked about the general topic. So we have our specific main ideas at the bottom here, but I began by just talking about texting and driving in general. Then, I used a fact or quote that related to my general topic, not the individual uh, things we're going to be talking about, but the general topic of texting and driving. Next, I introduced the text. This is a very good thing to do um, if you're given a text to work with. Just kind of do a sentence introduction to the test. Now, if you have a longer work, like say you're doing a Shakespeare play, like we're about to do, you can make it more than one sentence. You can give us a little bit of a description, not a summary of the whole thing, but a little bit of a description about the text. And next, always end in your thesis statement. So we did our thesis with the outline at the very beginning of this process, and you don't want to go through without putting your thesis statement in here. And always make it the last thing. As you can see, when we start talking about the general topic, very broad, and then we focus in to these three main ideas that we're going to focus on even more in the body paragraphs. So next is our conclusions. Here's an example conclusion. In conclusion, increasing and enforcing laws, spreading awareness, and changing the culture will all help prevent texting and driving. All of these strategies are necessary to aid in ending this dangerous habit. If nothing is done to end the culture of texting and driving, the nation will continue to see dangerous accidents and even deaths caused by something as insignificant as a text. It is up to everyone to do his or her part to stop distracted driving. So here are the things, the strategies I used. First, a transition. Your conclusion it is very important to use um, a transition that shows something like in summary, in conclusion. Even though in conclusion seems a little um, cliche or overdone, it really is a good one to use just to make sure you have something there. Next, repeat your main ideas. Basically, you're restating your thesis. We list all three main ideas that we've listed in our thesis, just phrased it a little differently. Next, I talked about the general topics. You can see it's kind of opposite of the introduction. The introduction started general and then went down to the main ideas. This one starts with the main ideas and is going back out general. And last, a call to action. It's always a good thing to end with a conclusion, especially, especially with a persuasive or argumentative paper. But really, any kind of paper, you can do something similar to this. So after I talked in general about texting and driving, I went out and said that everyone should do something about this. So last thing I want to talk about is formal, formal writing. This is how to make sure you have appropriate tone in your paper. Um, writing a formal paper is different than writing to a friend or talking to someone. Um, you really have to change your tone in the way you say things. You will not speak the same way in a paper as you would to anyone else. So here are some things to avoid in formal writing. These things are not necessarily grammatically incorrect, but they are things you want to avoid in formal writing. So first, no contractions. Contractions, remember, are things with apostrophes like don't or can't. Those things are grammatically correct, but you don't want to use them in formal writing. Next, these words, good, bad, a lot, nice, very, great, big, small, kids, and kinda. There are more to add to this list, but 
Do not use any of these words. These are very vague words. You can always replace any of these words which, with much better ones. Um, with good, you could use excellent if you want a, a boring one. You can go on from there. Use descriptive words. I don't want to see any of these words in your papers. I count off for them every single time. Next, no first or second person. Now this seems like a weird rule, but it really helps you avoid um, messing up your tone by either um, confronting the reader or talking too much about yourself. So remember words that are keys to first or second person, I, me, we, you, and us. Don't use any of those. I would suggest every time you write a paper going through and searching for each of those words and making sure you don't have them in there. All right, and that is it for now. So remember those things about introductions and conclusions, and remember to avoid these in your formal writing.